let's have a quick recap of where we are. This is, um, we'll just go back to an MS2 project, which is that one there. Um, engine constants, this is where, like we said earlier, about your required fuel, um, setting up your required fuel, um, control algorithm, uh, injector staging, uh, whether or not it's alternating or simultaneous firing of the batches, the banks, uh, the injector banks, number of cylinders, etc, etc. Um, more engine constants. This is where your uh, speed density alpha n for f uh, fuel, primary fuel load. Always make sure that one's disabled. Again, multiply. I don't incorporate the FR, but you can if you want to, if you want to tune it that way. Um, if you do change it from that to that once you've tuned it, you'll have to start again. So um, decide which way you want to go and start tuning with that. Um, ignition load, this is your primary ignition load. So this is either speed density alpha N. I'd keep these two the same, whichever way you choose to do it. Um, most people like to do alpha N, but... And secondary ignition load disabled. The same with the AFR table or the acceler uh, enhanced acceleration enrichment. Just use the primary load, which is basically whatever you've set up here, so you don't get confused. <coughs> Injector characteristics. This is where you'd set up your um, your dead time in MS2. Bear in mind this is an MS2 project, not MS3. MS3 is just a little bit more complicated. It's got a little bit more enhanced features in it, but the basis is still the same in MS2. Uh, just leave them as these these settings. This is for these three settings here, the same as in MS3, these, the pulse width current limit time threshold and, and the uh, pulse width modulation period are for um, uh, high impedance or low impedance injectors. These settings here are for high impedance injectors. If you've got low impedance injectors, you'll have to tune these settings for your um, for your EC, uh, for your injectors. But somewhere around 30% here and I forget what that should be now. I think that should be two or three milliseconds as a, as a um, as a start, and that should be about thirty percent. Um, I can't remember what they should be. I'll double check that and I'll refer back to that in a little while. But that's for low impedance. If you've got high impedance, then that's a hundred and twenty-five point six. And if you've got different injectors on bank two, which is highly unlikely, but if you have, you can set them up. If not, just leave that off. That, that way, it, bank two is complete is exactly the same as bank one. So if you, all your injectors are the same, then just set up bank one. Um, taco input. I'll go into this later, but this is where it is uh, for all the uh, various settings, uh, various um, trigger patterns it can follow. I'll, again, I'll do this one later as well. This is a, this is in MS3. I'll cover this in MS3. But this is where you set your dwell and uh, fixed or time. Uh, you could use fixed timing if you're trying to figure out what the advance is using a strobe. So the the, the um, ECU just had a fixed timer, so you can see it on a strobe. If you use table and the uh, RPMs fluctuate and um, the uh, the timing could fluctuate, so. Um, you just use fixed time and just so you can check it on a strobe and then go back to the table. Uh, I always use first deriv derivative pred uh, prediction. Um, we'll go through all these later in MS3. Um, yeah, just on that one. Trigger wheel settings. This is in MS3. This is all on one screen on the MS3, so it's just in little screens on MS2. But most of it's the same. Um, AFR table. This is your AFR target table. Same as in we discussed in MS3. Um, ignition table. General. This is the lags that we were talking about. This is the um, uh, your barometric correction. So <coughs> uh, just keep that on single table. It's very rare that you'd use dual table. That's for um, as part of an old code we used to use. Uh, just keep it on single table. Um, two independent sensors. If you've got a separate barometric pressure uh, sensor built into the ECU, then again you'd set that to two independent sensors and have it on four, four or five, depending on how I built it. Most people have initial map reading, 
that like we discussed earlier and these are your upper and lower limits that's your default these are your lags so the higher the number the less frequent it looks at these um, inputs and tends to smooth them out so um, if that was most of them should be 50 uh, if you want to say for instance like mine the lambdas fluctuating all over the place because it's just a bit erratic the 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 sensors some sensors vary a little bit you could increase that value uh, equally if you wanted to let the throttle position be looked at more frequently um, you can decrease that value a little bit but to be honest with you then 50 60 percent is fine map sample and window we haven't discussed this yet but you can decide what angle the um, the manifold air pressure sensor is is looked at so um, you could if you've got throttle body s uh, set up and you didn't get much map an average of much map you can change the angle when the manifold air pressure sensor is looked at so um, you can decide when the um, when the best position when the best place for um, the map is because the the map will fluctuate uh, during the engine cycle so uh, you can just you can change this value until you get a nice map reading um, uh, if you're in speed density mode uh, that's the window so that be that be open for 10 degrees at 40 degrees so at 40 degrees it then open for 10 degrees and um, number of samples you can increase samples and you can have a, uh, use the lowest value or the average value of what, what during within that window fuel table size we used to do a 12 by 12 when we first opened ms2 um, but now they're all 16 by 16 but if you have got an old 12 by 12 table you can select that one but most people use 16 by 16 and then this is just um, uh, whatever you prefer celsius or fahrenheit um, rev limiter a lot more basic in ms2 um, it's the same but you just haven't got the so much selectability so you have spark retard fuel cut spark retard and fuel cut spark cut and retard or all of it um but it's just not coolant based like it is in ms3 and then the eager correction um you can have dual wide bands if you wanted so you'd have two so the first one's on the first port uh dual wide band then you could select whichever one, whichever pin was the second one. So that'd be, say, one of the AD analog digital inputs, so JS4, for instance. So you could have um, one bank bank controlled by the local, the, the first sensor, and the other bank, bank two, being controlled by a second sensor. And then these settings are virtually or are the same as um, in MS3 and also you've got the PID if you want to use the um, PID settings rather than a simple stepped setting so this chases it using steps, it'll chase at one step, one percent at a time up to ten percent to try and um, after 18 ignition events that'll alter it by one percent depending if it's rich or lean uh, in simple if you're in PID then it chases it using um, proportional gain uh, the correction error that's previous known error uh, previous step that it size and it can make a little bit more of an educated guess but these values here take some setting up to get that right so most people end up with simple correction that just chases it up and down um, this lot we haven't covered yet but this gives you some idea the difference between MS2 and MS3 sequential injection um, I think we've covered that earlier so you can go semi sequential or um, it will actually run se full sequential but you have to have four injector drivers so you have to add four injector drivers to it to do that um, I, I tend to shy away from that these days uh, if you want sequential you get an MS3 in my opinion um, although this can do it but the hardware is a bit I haven't found it particularly reliable so um, but again you've got the same similar settings start of pulse mid pulse or uh, end of pulse this is the time and the table so we've got used table so it's somewhere in here we should have 
injector timing table it's a little bit smaller table but it's the same as what we discussed in MS3 so this is your injector timing table that's that would be far on the injectors each injector at 90 degrees um, you could have it so that 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 reference the start of the pulse the middle of the pulse or the end of the pulse same as in um, MS3 or you can get rid of the table and just have a single angle that you fire the um, fuel in over the whole range you don't have to use the timing table if you don't want to uh, and again you've got feet uh, you can trim the fuel on each cylinder if you wished again you'd need the hardware don't forget you'd need the so there's your fuel trim for the bank one and fuel trim for bank two and if you had uh, the if you had that's using the standard drivers so we've got two standard drivers on the MS main on the main boards if you did have um, four injector drivers because the MS2 can have four MS uh, injector drivers if you did have then you'd uh, select that to additional drivers and then you can do up to four you can trim all four injector drivers individually so you could um, add or decrease fuel using the tables so basically um, just to recap if you um, if you wanted if you just got two banks say if you've got a ZTEC for instance and four cylinder waste of spark two banks of fuel uh, one bank fire on two injectors one bank fire on the other two injectors you can run that semi-sequential um, semi-sequential standard drivers don't use the trims because it's pointless and um, as long as you've got a 36 minus one wheel or a, a crank wheel that's fed to the ECU uh, like 60 minus two that sort of thing you can run it semi-sequentially using two banks the standard injector drivers so uh, you can decide when the fuel is going to go in for each pair of injectors. So um, basically, if, if you have a good look on my website, there's a good explanation of how this all functions and works. But it will squirt half the fuel in um, twice per engine cycle. Um, and you can alter the timing that, that puts the fuel in at. So you could have, uh, you could alter the, the, um, the angle that the fuel's put in at on, two in, on a pair of injectors. So uh, that's quite handy to do if you if you want to have a play with that. If not, untimed in injection, and that's just standard fired when it's needed. Uh, untimed is the difference between the two. I have played with both on a ZTEC, and I couldn't get it any. There's not much difference between them, if any. Um, but it's there if you want to have a play with it. The um, semi-sequential Siamese is for Siamese heads for the, like the um, old minis um, had a Siamese head where two cylinders shared um, the same in inlet port. Uh, so one f in one cylinder would rob the fuel from another cylinder. Um, if you tr if you tried to squirt it in twice per um, engine cycle when one cylinder required the fuel that take all that fuel from one and rob th the the next cylinder's fuel away from it so um, we have the semi-sequential Siamese mode and sequential Siamese modes um, they're specialists and s the Siamese modes are for, um, for uh, where you've got Siamese heads so ignore them two for general setups and the so the it's between these two that you've got or uh, you're going to use most often it's worth messing about the semi-sequential because you may find that you know you prefer that you may get smoother idle but um, I wouldn't get too hung up on that to start with I would do most of your tuning on untimed and then maybe switch that over later on and have a play with that later on once you're happy with everything and um, this is one of the final things I do once you're tuned and in MS3 we've got a similar th we've discussed this earlier but um, in MS3 um, there's the injector timing table and uh, if I can just remember where it is there's the area we are, MS3 so you've got semi-sequential, fully sequential like we discussed earlier 
end of squirt, middle squirt, injector trim so you can adjust each injector and the far and order. So as you can see MS3 just takes everything a stage further, so a lot deeper than, um, than MS2.